Hello everyone and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra and today we're going to be looking at removing, deleting, trying to eradicate or at least reduce lots of those boring words that get repeated all the time. And we're going to be replacing those with lots of interesting alternatives, a greater variety of alternatives. So at advanced levels, at upper intermediate levels, it's a good idea to vary your vocabulary and not repeat um, very similar words, not repeat very similar phrases. So we're going to be working on that today. And I just want to also apologize for some of the gaps in our videos lately in our, in our output. I'm um, planning to get married, so I'm in the middle of all the wedding preparations, and as well as that, I have a young child. Uh, Layla also has a young child, and she's just moved country. She's just moved to Portugal. So it's all been happening here at Love English HQ, but thank you so much for staying with us and being patient, and our video output will increase very soon. So thank you very much, guys. Don't forget as well, if you want to catch up with us more and see more of our short videos and things like that, do follow us on TikTok, Instagram, or on Facebook. So the first word we're going to delete today, or we're going to at least reduce, is nice. Now I have been a IELTS style examiner. I've examined on a very similar um, exam to IELTS at a university. And many of the students used this word all the time and it used to drive me crazy and immediately I would want to mark them down because I don't want to hear the word nice repeated all the time when there are so many other words you could say. Let's look at some alternatives. You could say charming, enjoyable, pleasing, pleasant, even awesome, bit more informal, or wonderful. Or if you simply want to say that it was just okay, that you know you don't want to use something that's perhaps um, more than nice, like wonderful is, you could simply say it was standard or it was average. So these are some alternatives to nice. Let's look at them in some sentences. The city where I'm from is a charming place. I had a really pleasant weekend. She's a lovely person. It's enjoyable to be around her. It was a scrumptious meal. You can also add in some phrases instead of saying nice. You could say, the city where I live is full of character, or is picturesque, or is quaint. There are many adjectives that can be used to replace very samey adjectives like nice and good. I would put good in the same category here as well. Quaint means quite old fashioned, um, picturesque in a sense, quite cute. And picturesque means postcard worthy, worthy of going on a postcard, very pretty. Often England, some of the little English villages can be described as picturesque. So instead of saying, my city's nice, you can get a nice meal there. Think about using one of those alternatives. Now it's one thing knowing all these words, but the next thing is pronouncing them correctly. And some of these can of course be tricky as you probably know. So if you would like to improve your pronunciation and you want a more British accent, so you want to talk a little bit more like Layla and myself, then a fantastic app to do that with is Veebsy. Veebsy is a British pronunciation app. It's free. It has so many free pronunciation exercises on there. There are many different features to it. You can learn expressions and how to pronounce them along with um, native British English speakers. Or you can also do daily pronunciation exercises. So there are different categories on the pronunciation exercises part of the app and those are social, business, and inspiration and motivation. Now in this, you have lots and lots of sentences on those topics, and you will be given the sentence and you can hear it said by a native. Then you can record yourself on the app back and get instant feedback, get live feedback about how you did. So I'm gonna show you some of this. So for example, if you look here, I'm gonna show you in more detail on the screen here. So let's go to business. So here I've got the business part. And this part says, um, this, my sentence is, they love the idea, so we should fast track it. They love the idea, so we should fast track it. Then I would record and say my voice. They love that idea, so we should fast track it. So then it assesses how well I've done, how well I pronounced that. And it's going to give me some live feedback. Let's see what it says about my pronunciation. Excellent, it says I nailed it. <laughs> Phew, I'm relieved about that. My score was 83, why not 100? And it tracks your progress. And you would swipe through 
and you'd go to all the different sentences. Um, there are many, many sentences just to know how well you're doing with your pronunciation. There's also a whole section on the phonemic chart. So it tells you all um, the different sounds of English and how to pronounce them. But the great thing is, is that you can hear and copy natives on this. So you can really know that you're copying a native and that you're getting feedback from a native. So it's a really great thing um, to download, guys. And it's so easy to use and just really, really will help your progress with pronunciation. So go ahead and download VBZ today. The next one which I want you to replace is bad. Again, this is repeated all the time. Oh, there was bad weather. Oh, it was a bad meal in that restaurant. Oh, I had a bad day. Let's look at some alternatives. You could say rotten, crappy, substandard, unpleasant, atrocious, foul, rank, ghastly, horrific, grim, rubbish. Or you could say it was a letdown or disappointing. Now, of course, these don't all mean the same. So let's have a look at some examples of these and how you would use them in a sentence and where you could replace bad with one of these. So instead of saying, I had a bad day, you could say, oh, I had a rotten day, or I had a stinker of a day, meaning you had an unpleasant day at work, things perhaps went wrong, you hit traffic, you know, one of those days, we all know what I'm talking about. So you could say, I had a rotten day, or a stinker of a day, or I had a crappy day, that's quite informal, so that's more slang or I had a rubbish day. If your day is very bad, you could move to the more extreme adjectives like horrific and horrendous. Sometimes if I get stuck in very bad traffic, I would say, oh, I've had a horrendous time in this traffic jam, or it's been horrific, something like that. Especially if my daughter has been screaming in the hot weather, uh, in the car with the traffic, I would say, oh, it's been horrific, or it's been atrocious even. Atrocious is very strong, it means very, very bad. Now, if you don't have a great meal in a restaurant, you could say, the meal was substandard or unpleasant. Or a letdown. A letdown means it let you down. You expected more from this. So if you say, hmm, the holiday was a bit of a letdown because the weather was bad, or because the place wasn't exactly what we'd hoped for, you could say it was a letdown. With a bad meal, the adjectives you want that describe unpleasant tastes are rank or foul. The meal was rank. If it tasted really horrible, you would say the meal was rank. Again, if it tastes really bad, you would say the meal was foul. Now, instead of saying there's been bad weather, you can say there's been crappy weather, or the weather's been rubbish, or the weather's been grim. Grim means, um, you know, quite dark, quite dull, this kind of thing. You would say, oh, the weather's been pretty grim. If you're talking about an experience that's bad, you could say, again, that it was unpleasant, it was disappointing, or if it's very bad, it's awful, it's horrific, even atrocious. There's that whole list there to choose from instead of relying on bad all the time. Okay, the next word that's very overused is, of course, beautiful. We use this word all the time. Now, let's look at some alternatives. Of course, we use different adjectives for different occasions. So the way we might want to describe, for example, someone's appearance is different to the way we might want to talk about a painting or a view, or for example, a, a sunset. So there's all different ones which we would use. Let's have a look at the list now. Attractive, gorgeous, dazzling, splendid, magnificent, ravishing, exquisite, stunning, glorious, resplendent, radiant, glowing, a knockout, fabulous. Now, as you can probably tell, these are all quite different in their meaning, but they all do comment in some way on something being pleasing to the eye. So let's have a look at some examples of how you can use them. Resplendent is a wonderful adjective. It means colorful, full of light and attractiveness. So you would say a sunset was resplendent, or if a person has a particularly beautiful dress, you could say they look resplendent. Layla was looking resplendent at the party in a red cocktail dress. The colourful towns in Italy are resplendent in the sunlight. Now for describing skies which are particularly attractive, we can say it's a glorious day. So instead of saying it's a beautiful day, which gets repeated a lot, you can say it's a glorious day, or it's a fabulous day, or look at these clear blue skies, what stunning weather we're having. Now let's look at the words stunning and exquisite. Stunning can be used for many things. A view can be stunning. 
A painting in a museum can be stunning. A lady can be stunning. There are many, many ways we can use this word, so it's actually very um, useful in that sense. Exquisite, on the other hand, is, is more special. It's for jewellery, fine jewellery, or a lady who is just looking so perfect. It suggests a degree of perfection. Some breeds of birds, like the bird of paradise, can be described as exquisite. If you want to say that a lady is beautiful, you can say a knockout, perhaps a little bit more American English, but we do say it a lot here. So you can say a knockout, or you can say wonderful, fabulous, stunning, ravishing, radiant. Radiant suggests that there's some sort of glow, that you're shining in a way. So that's a nice one to use as well. You could say to a lady, wow, you look radiant in that dress, or you look so happy, you look radiant. Another word you could use instead of beautiful is dazzling. When you see light sparkling on the water, you can say it's dazzling. A view of the sea, a view of the ocean can be dazzling. Jewelry can be dazzling. You could say something like, if you see my city in the sunlight, it's really dazzling. There are so many beautiful buildings all lit up by the sun, it's dazzling. The next one that we're going to reduce is interesting. This one also gets overused by native speakers. We're also very bad at this and we need to sometimes use something which is more interesting. It gets rather boring to hear this word repeated so often. So let's have a look. You can say fascinating, engaging, engrossing, captivating, gripping, intriguing, thought-provoking, absorbing, consuming, much stronger than interesting, but still an option. Enthralling, spellbinding, it's a particular favourite of mine. Spellbinding, curious. Now, of course, they don't all mean exactly the same as interesting or exactly the same as each other, but there are many times when you can replace where you would use interesting with one of these. So let's start with gripping. If we say something is gripping, we mean it's taken hold of us, it's gripped us. To grip is to hold tightly, so it holds us tightly we are very, very absorbed in it. It has us gripped. So normally we use this to describe um, thrillers. So a film, which is very thrilling, we would say it's gripping. A novel can be gripping. Um, a roller coaster ride can be gripping. This is similar to captivating and engrossing. These can all be used in quite a similar way. Another option would be perhaps riveting. That means very interesting. It's the next step up from interesting. So riveting or enthralling. Well, my cousin's just come back from traveling in South Africa. Some of the stories he's told us about encounters with wildlife are riveting. Now, something which captures your interest or really makes you think could be described as intriguing or thought-provoking. If something intrigues you, it really takes you in, you're, you're going to ponder on this, you're going to try and find solutions or answers, like a murder mystery could be intriguing. We can also describe books and films and lectures conversations which generate thought where afterwards we're, we know we're going to think about things that we know that they've stimulated us. They could be described as thought-provoking or stimulating. Spellbinding is another one similar to enthralling, captivating. It's like someone has put a spell on you. You're, oh, you're so wowed by something. For me, something that I find spellbinding is a trip to the theater. Watching a theatrical performance, particularly musical theater, or listening to a great storyteller or a beautiful piece of music, there you could say spellbinding. The last word we're going to look at today is happy. So let's have a look. You could say pleased, delighted, jubilant, ecstatic, happy as Larry, walking on air, on cloud nine, over the moon, joyful, cheerful, or glad. There are in fact more than that, but those are the ones we'll focus on today. So there's no excuse for keeping saying that you're happy. So happy as Larry, walking on air, on cloud nine, over the moon. These are all, of course, idiomatic expressions. These are slightly more informal, although you, you can use them in formal situations, but probably not um, happy as Larry. So these all mean high levels of happiness. So if you say you're walking on air, you're on cloud nine, you're very happy. Happy as Larry just means happy. So you would say she was over the moon when she passed her driving test. They were on cloud nine when they got engaged. However, more direct synonyms for happy are delighted, joyful, cheerful, jubilant. So you might say, oh, I was delighted when I went on holiday to Greece. I just so needed a holiday. Or she was really jubilant this morning when she saw she'd had a pay increase. Happy as Larry is a funny one. I think it's much more British. 
Who knows who Larry is, but obviously he was pretty happy. So we might say something like, the teacher was happy as Larry when she read all the positive feedback from her students. Now I want you guys to try and use some of these in the comments below. When was the last time that you were walking on air or on cloud nine or over the moon? Have you felt happy as Larry recently? Tell us about that in the comments below. That's all we've got time for today, everybody, but I do hope this video has encouraged you to decrease your use of some of those boring everyday words. We'll see you soon on Love English. Bye-bye.